Hello and welcome back audience, my name is Massive Brad and welcome back to my FIFA 20 Dortmund career mode. Now before we get into today's episode, I just want to say a huge big thank you for love and support on the channel. And as always guys, at the start of today's episode, we're quickly going to look at the games that lie ahead. We will be finishing off the month of February in 2020 and by doing that we'll be taking on PSG for the first leg in the round of 16 Champions League. We then take on Werder Bremen away from home in the Bundesliga and then Freiburg back at home for the last game in today's episode also in the Bundesliga. Now we briefly touched up on, on the last episode at the end. We talked about which games we'd be playing and which one we'd be simulating. We decided we would simulate the Freiburg game one because it's at home, and two, because they're lower down the league than Werder Bremen, which means then it leaves Werder Bremen to play, which is the away game in the Bundesliga, and then, of course, we wouldn't dare be simulating a game in the Champions League, especially with how well we've been playing recently. You guys, in the last episode, it was called the turning point in our career, and it was a turning point because we come up against Bayer Leverkusen and we managed to get a win. We'd played them twice before then and sadly lost both times. Third time lucky, we managed to get a win. But before we dive into the action in today's episode, guys, we're quickly going to jump over to the comment section. Now, something I also want to mention to you guys is in January, I am aiming to hit 50 views within 24 hours of the video going live, which so far... The Liverpool episode and the Dortmund episode that I have released in 2020 have done that. So thank you so much, guys. I also want to aim for 10 likes on every video. We have 9 currently on the first episode of the Liverpool Cream Mode Season 2. And we have, let me just scroll up and take a little look on this last episode. We have 7 on the last Dortmund episode. So if you have watched it and haven't given it a like, head over there and give it a thumbs up. Because we're aiming to hit 10 likes on every video in the month of January. And if you guys can hit the like button, that would be hugely and greatly appreciated. Going on to the comments section. First comment coming in from Haidar Bani saying Klosterman and Marlen are good signings on career mode. Yes, they are, Hadar. Klosterman has been solid and Marlen is a very good super sub for us right now. He's very quick. He's got a decent shot on him. So when Paco Alcacer is getting a little bit tired, we bring him on the flesh. Flesh? The fresh legs of Marlen can really do some damage to the opposition. So yeah, I agree. Yeah, Haidar, Klosterman and Marlen have been spectacular signings so far. Chris coming on with when Brad uploads on your birthday. Well, unfortunately, Chris, by the time I'm recording this and by the time you're seeing it, it's already past your birthday. But happy belated birthday. I hope you had a great birthday. I hope you got all the presents that you did wish for. I can't believe your birthday's so close to Christmas. That means you get Christmas presents and only a week later, you're getting birthday presents. That's not bad. Although, does that mean you get less because you've got two big celebrations within a week or so of each other? Moving on to the next one, another one coming in from Haidar saying, which other young players would you think to sign in a Brighton career mode? Well, this is to do with his career mode, ladies and gentlemen, so I won't discuss this with you guys. I'll just leave a comment, and if you guys ever want help with career modes, be sure to drop a comment down below, but I won't include it in the video because, well, it's boring for the rest of you guys. Ethan LFC saying, you're welcome, Brad. Thanks for putting my goal in the video. You guys will have seen in the last episode, I included a goal, which was a free kick by Kevin De Bruyne, and it was a spectacular free kick and to be honest Ethan it's one of the best free kicks I've ever seen so you're very very welcome and final comment coming in from Lee saying another great episode with a fist bump well Lee thank you very much for the support I appreciate all the support of you guys but now we will dive into the games in today's episode as I say guys if you're watching this video right now and you haven't given a like make sure to smash that like button we're aiming for 10 likes on every video in January and we're also trying to hit 50 views within 24 hours of every video going live thank you so much for making me hit that goal so far on two of the videos. Hopefully we'll also hit it on this video, which will be the third video of 2020. But up next, we do take on PSG. We are now going to attend the press conference. We'll then get into the uh, the lineup. I'll show you guys the starting 11 that we're putting out against PSG, and then we can dive straight into the game and hopefully kick off today's episode with a win. Here we are. Merci, we are ready. Piszczek is in good form. Will we see more of him today? Uh, Unfortunately, Klosterman isn't fully fit, and I could have brought P's check in, but I've gone with Klosterman instead. So I'm just going to go with rotation is key. I think he'll certainly make a, an appearance in one of the games in today's episode, but not this one. It's too big. Considering PSG is similar to Borussia Dortmund in terms of strength, how do you plan to handle the match in this round? Um, we'll need luck. No, we must try carefully. Yeah, we have one of the best teams. I'd say in the Bundesliga, unfortunately with Bayern Munich absolutely flying at the moment. We're in a little bit of a rut there, but the Champions League, we're doing all right. Given the recent close call against Eintracht Frankfurt, what was your general sentiment amongst the players in regards um, 
they have to play better. No, uh, we were not affected. We have proven tactics. Yeah, we have proven tactics. Let's go with that. And that is going to do us for a press conference for the game against PSG. We now can get into the game. You guys will notice that the starting 11 has had to be a little bit rotated. Unfortunately, we're not back fully fit since the game against Eintracht Frankfurt. I think we played on the Sunday, and I think this is either the Tuesday or Wednesday. Obviously, Champions League is always midweek, so we haven't had enough time to unfortunately get the usual starting 11 back to full fitness. You can see Berkey, Akanji, Klosterman, Marco Reus. I'm not fully fit, but I'm going to start them. Apart from probably Berkey, Akanji, Klosterman and Royce, I may look to take off. But we'll see how the fitness goes throughout today's episode. But you can see we're going with Marlen up top in the striker position. Marco Royce, the captain in the central attack and midfield. Then Larson, Delaney, Vigel and Hazard through the midfield. Hakimi, Zagadou, Akanji and Klosterman at the back with Roman Berkey between the sticks. We have got a slight problem with Hazard right now, which I mentioned in the last episode, but nobody left a comment. Guys, Hazard has handed in his transfer request. He was very, very unhappy. It was red. He's now slowly becoming a little bit more happier. Is there a chance of getting back to full happiness? Will he withdraw that transfer request, or is it too late now? We are unfortunately going to have to move him on, and the board will just sell him. Please let me know down below, because I'd like to do my utmost best to keep Torgan Hazard at the club. But let's get into this game against PSG. We're away from home, so let's score some goals and do it in style. Right, let's get this going. Neymar, Thiago Silva, Mbappe. It's not an easy one. Kim Pembe at the back for them as well, I think. We've got this though. We managed to beat uh, Bayern never losing. So I think we can do a job of a PSG. It is just unfortunately their front three. Is that Kyle Walker there? I think they've got Kyle Walker at right back. But it's their front three. It's the Di Maria, the Neymar, the Mbappe. That's that's where the problems get caused for us. But you know what? Going forward, we've got Molen. He's quick. He's going to get on the better side of Thiago Silva. He will get away from him and hopefully put a few in the back of the net. But it is going to be Kylian Mbappe to get us kicked off in his first half period. Let's get it underway. And come on, black and yellows. Through now to Marco Royce. Going to go out wide here now to Brun Larson, who's running nicely. Playing on the inside now, looking for Marlen. Marlen's going to get there. Go again. Oh, he's at the post. Good start, lads. Good start. Vigal to Marco Royce. Into Marlen. Back now to Marco Royce. Going to wait for the run there to Marlen. Marlen is through these PSG defenders. Marlen! It's 1 0. Well, Haidar, you said Klosterman and Marlen have been sublime players to bring in in career mode. And he's just scored against PSG. The man's speed is ridiculous. I'd consider in the future maybe having him in a Liverpool career mode. If you want a quick, fast, Striker that can just get in behind. Marlen is fabulous. And whoever recommended him, thank you so much. Because he is a unbelievable striker. And we have now taken the lead thanks to Marlen. Mbappe now coming forward. Mbappe is absolutely flying here. Are we going to be able to get hold of him? We should do. Berkey's on it. Well done, Berkey. Should have been a foul there. He took the ball from outside his air. From inside his hands. And that is a beautiful ball up now to Torgan Hazard. Verratti is chasing him down. Surely he's got the better legs on Verratti. Hazard puts a little dink in now for Larson in the middle. It's going to fall to Marco Royce. And Mark Kinnios gets a block on it. Royce over to Torgan Hazard. And now to Marco Royce. Torgan Hazard. And now to Marlen. Marlen laying it off now to Marco Royce. Through on goal. Marco Royce. 2-0 ladies and gentlemen. Two away goals, bear that in mind as well. We have, uh, I think at the start when I took over Dortmund, it was really about getting the balance, learning the strong points, the weak points, learning that Marco Royce has got an incredible right foot finesse. He can just bend it and kill it out of the reach of the keeper and into the back of the net nine out of ten times. Marco Royce coming deep now, ball through there to Mbappe. Mbappe getting a shot off. Great save from Roman Berkey, right on half time as well. Roman Berkey he may have just kept us in this. Let's try and get this ball out if we can. Clear it out. Vigel's on it. Klosterman's going to hoof it out. And the referee's going to blow for half-time. Defended that corner very well. I think we've been defending very well. Considering we've got Di Maria, Neymar and Mbappe attacking us. It can, uh, I thought we were going to struggle a lot more than we have. And to be honest, I'm quite happy to jump back into the second half with exactly the same team. I'll give everyone another 10, 15-minute run out. Then we'll start looking at the fitness and start looking at uh, changing things up. But we're playing some stunning football at the moment. I'd like to just see this game out for a clean sheet. But if we can 
Try and get another goal. Is Mario Goethe intercepting it now to Sancho. Straight up now to Marlene. He's going to wait for the overlap here of Brun Larson. Larson throw a goal for his first Dortmund goal. Brun Larson gets it. Unbelievable. Chris, you told me to start playing Brun Larson over Guerra. It's been he's he's been playing well. He's been making great runs, great passing, great crossing. But as for goals, he hasn't been doing that for us. But it's nice to see finally someone that you guys recommended that I bring into the team. Brun Larson gets on the score sheet and puts that last nail in the coffin. I think we're going to get a clean sheet here. And I think we're going to go on to be PSG 3-0. Sancho in for the middle for Ennis Bardi, who's now coming forward. Ennis Bardi, Mario Goethe, up now to Marlen. Going to lay us off now to Ennis Bardi, who's coming forward. Ennis Bardi to make it four. Massive save there from Navas. And the referee blows his full-time whistle. We have got on to be PSG 3-0 away from home in the first leg. I think, as the commentator just said there, it's job done. I don't think when PSG come to Dortmund to take on the black and yellows, I don't think they've got a single chance. If we're going to play that well away from home and beat them 3-0, I honestly don't think they've got a chance. And if you look at the stats on paper, we absolutely cruised it. 14 shots, 8 on target for ourselves. 5 shots, 4 on target for PSG. Daniel Maylen picks up undeservedly. Man of the match of a 9.5 rating. We are now going to go into the post-match interview. What a cracking game and a nice couple of goals as well. As just keeping a clean sheet. I said to you guys, I don't feel like there's a team at the moment. Other than Bayern Munich and Leverkusen that are really going to cause us any problems. An impressive win today. Surely this win will take Borussia Dortmund through to the next round. Do you agree? Um, yeah, we need to stay focused. I wouldn't say, although I said I'm pretty sure it's done. There's no reason why PSG couldn't come back from that and score three goals themselves. I think if we go 1 or 2 nil up when we're at home in the second leg, then it's game over. But we'll have to wait and see. We didn't get to see P's check play today. Yeah, um... Yeah, team comes first. Peace check may not have, have played as well as, as Klosterman did, and Klosterman was uh, was absolutely unbelievable. Comfortable win after three goals scored by Borussia Dortmund. Do you think the game could have gone another way? No chance. Um, we probably could have scored more. Yeah, we did have a, a few uh, clear-cut chances. We could have done some serious damage to PSG. 3-0 isn't too bad. It could have been 4 or 5 Right, and up next, we take on Werder Bremen. And to be honest, guys, we've started off today's episode exactly how I wanted to. We took on the French Giants PSG, and we managed to beat them 3-0. That's three away goals. Next, they're going to be coming to our home turf, which is exactly what we want. Because if we get a goal or two in that first half period when they come to us, I think we've pretty much got this in the bag. So another step forwards in the Champions League journey. Up next, we're taking on eighth position Werder Bremen. And we could do with bagging all the points realistically. Between now and the end of the Bundesliga, we need to bag every point possible. We're currently six points behind Bayer Leverkusen on 55 points. And we're 11 points behind Bayer Munich, who currently sit on 60 points. So, 11 points to catch Bayer Munich is probably looking a little bit of a long shot. Catching Bayer Leverkusen, though, I think is within our grasp. And as we get into this game against Werder Bremen, it's games like this where the three points are important. If we manage to beat Werder Bremen and do it in style and score plenty of goals, keep clean sheets, we also boost our goal difference. And then all we need is Bayer Leverkusen to drop a couple of games, lose a couple of games, and we can be right on top of them, ready to pounce. Potentially, if Bayern Munich, I do think we've got to play them again. If they are to lose two or three games by the time we actually play them, there's a chance we can catch them as well. But we have to remember that we'd need to win every single game, in my opinion, between now and the end of the season, to catch Bayern Munich. And that's only if they start losing games. So we'll have to see how they get on in the next couple of episodes. We've played 22. I do believe there's 34 games to be played in the Bundesliga. But up next, we do take on Werder Bremen. We're going back with Paco Alcacer up top in the striker position. A little behind him for, I do believe, his first Premier, Premier League, his first Bundesliga game start. It's Mario Goethe, then Julian Brandt, Delaney, Vittel and Sancho through the midfield. Schultz, Tummels, Sionju and Piszczek at the back with Berkey between the sticks. A few players coming in like Piszczek and Sionju, Mario Goethe, who don't usually get a start, but they are because of rotation and unfortunately the usual players that start there aren't fully fit. But let's get into this game against Werder Bremen. Let's bag those three points. Come on, we've just managed to beat PSG. We can take on eighth position Werder Bremen. 
But Werder Bremen doing pretty well as we eight in the Bundesliga. And it is games like this where we can't afford to suffer dropping points. We have to win. We have to do it by scoring plenty of goals. And as Werder Bremen do get us kicked off in his first half period, let's get it underway. Let's show Werder Bremen what we're made of. Keep going, please, yeah. Keep going, son. Nice. He's on his Witzel. Through now to Julian Brandt. Paco Alcas here wanting to go through the middle. Going to pull it back on the inside now to Julian Brandt. Julian Brandt through on goal. Julian Brandt to finish! And he does so beautiful. Low driven, left foot for next shot. Beats the keeper. I'm debating whether the keeper actually got a foot or hand to it. But it's a crack and run. Well pulled back there from Mario Goethe into Julian Brandt. It doesn't take a deflection off the keeper. It's just nice and low. Tucked away in that bottom left corner. And it's a beautiful goal from our left midfielder, Julian Brandt. Alcacer going out wide now to Sancho. Back in now to Paco Alcacer. He's got the better of his man. Here comes Paco Alcacer. Julian Brandt towards the back post. Ball into Julian Brandt. He's going to get there. And it's onto the crossbar. Unbelievable from Julian Brandt there. Heads it straight into the ground. Bounces it over the keeper. And just sat there and watched. Hoped it was going to come underneath the bar. But unfortunately, trickles onto the bar. And then onto the roof of the net and out for a goal kick. Down now to Paco Alcas here. Out wide now to Julian Brandt. Who's going to try and get on the better side of this defender. Here comes Julian Brandt. And look for Paco Alcas here on the edge. Playing it in now to Delaney. He's going to look to finesse this. Thought that should have been in. It really should have been in from the captain Delaney. Let's have a look from a better angle. Just doesn't whip it in enough. And it does just go wide a goal. It was unlucky from Delaney though. Play it down now. Keep the attack going there. Unlucky. Hummel's going to come round. Siunju got to get across now. Going to slide in there. Roman Beck, he's going to get across. Unfortunately, David Klassen's on the end of it. The ex-Everton man, David Klassen. I had to slide in with Siunju to try and get the ball. Comes in towards David Klassen at the back post. Oh, no, that is a stupid interception. Well done, Berkey. Let's go now looking for Sancho to run to. Paco's going to run for it. Go on, Paco. And I tell you what. I don't know what's happened here, but the Vera Bremen defenders have turned off here. Pull it back on the inside now. It's Jaden Sancho. It's 2 1. I don't know what happened to the Vera Bremen defenders there. They switched off. I don't think they thought Paco Alcacer was going to get to it. He does. He manages to keep running into the box. Cuts it back to Jaden Sancho on the edge of the box. He just left off Finesse's at home. What did the Vera Bremen defenders do there? Great goal from Jaden Sancho, and we now take the lead again, right before half-time, in the 41st minute, as the ball's cleared out, I'm sure as we head this down, the referee surely, as he does, blows for half-time, we are going in and back in the lead, which is what I like to see, because I don't believe for one minute, we deserve to not be in the lead, we've played some great football, unfortunately just a simple ball through to Davy Klassen at the far post, it had our keeper scrambling to get towards that back post, unfortunately Davy Klassen already hit it, by the time he got there, we are going back into the second half of exactly the same team. We currently have the 2-0-1 lead. I'm happy to keep going. And I think it's only a matter of time before we get into fifth gear and start really pushing on. Well done, Sionju. Keep going, son. Nicely done. Alcacer round now to Julian Brandt. Look at this. It's clearly going to be 3-1-1. Here comes Julian Brandt to Paco Alcacer. It's 3-1. This is going to be a walk in the park from this point onwards. We're getting them every time on the counter. They can't get back. They can't recoup. And as we run down towards the keeper, we play it on the inside to Paco Alcacer from Julian Brandt. And it's an easy slotted shot home. It's 3-1. And this is going to end 4 or 5 one Watch this space, ladies and gentlemen. Up now to Paco Alcacer. Through there now to Schultz. And here comes Nico Schultz. Now running at the Verde Bremen keeper. Here comes Nico Schultz. He's put it wide to goal. All he had to do was put that on target and it's in the back of the net to Mario Goethe. It's a great ball through now to Mario Goethe. He's going to get round his man and he's going to keep running at these defenders. And Paco Alcacer wants to back off a little bit. Ball in there to Witzel. What a solo goal from Witzel. And watch Witzel run from the halfway line. He picks up the ball, although you probably can't call it too much of a solo goal. Look at this touch from Witzel. Look at a touch. Look at a hit. Chests it. Down onto his left foot. First time. Lobs the keeper. Look at this. Dink. Beautiful. Stunning, stunning goal from Axel Witzel. I told you guys it was going to end 4 or 5 1. 
it's now 4 1. And I think we'll be scoring that goal in the 67th minute. We will look at making a couple of changes. So, Mario Goethe is going to make his way to the bench for Ennis Bardi. We're also going to go Julian Brandt for Guerra. And the last move for me is going to be. I'm going to go Witzel for Mahmoud the Hood. And I think they're the only changes. I'll happily start Marlen over Alcacer against Freiburg. Sancho might not be back fully fit, but we've got Torgan Hazard. Hopefully, Julian Brandt will be back fully fit. If not, we can always play a Brun Larson. But they are the three changes we are making in this game against Werder Bremen. We're absolutely smashing a 4 1. I'm sure we're going to find a fifth, maybe even a sixth now. Ball on the inside now to Bittencourt. Bittencourt coming forwards. Few step overs there. Here comes Bittencourt. We're going to slide in. Go on, see Andrew. Stay on him. And Bolo scores. Is it offside? It's not. I thought that was offside, you know. Let me see a replay on that. I thought Mbolo was offside. Is it Sionju that just keeps him onside? Is it Sionju? If it's anyone, I think it is Sionju. It's 4-2. I think this game was already put to bed before that goal went in. Is Mbolo coming forwards now? And as Mbolo tries to play it out wide, the referee is going to blow his full-time whistle. We've beaten Werder Bremen 4-2. Although we did concede two goals, I felt there was, wasn't too much pressure. I felt comfortable. I felt that we played some great football. And realistically, look on paper. Ten shots, six on target. They had four shots, three on target. Paco Alcacer picks up man of the match of a 9.4 rating. We do now go into the post-match interview. We've got Freiburg up next for the final game and the simulated game in today's episode. Let's hope we can finish on another win. And have bagged maximum points out of today's episode. Here we go. Yep, ask away. Congratulations, your winning streak is extended with today's match. Uh, we can go all the way. Uh, I'm focused on long-term success. My yeah, my players deserve. There's no point in long-term success right now because, well, Bayern Munich are causing us problems in the Bundesliga. When compared to SV Werder Bremen, Borussia Dortmund is considered a far stronger side. I wouldn't say that. Um, was a win ever in doubt? Never in doubt. Always pray for the worst. You never know. Yeah, you never know. I mean, Werder Bremen, there's teams that have, have in the Bundesliga that have put us in bad situations this season so far. Congratulations, you managed to defeat Werder Bremen this time. What do you think of this match? Um, I'm proud of the lads. I wouldn't say no one doubters again because there's always going to be doubters out there. Unfortunately, there is times that we, uh, we do unfortunately drop points. Right, and for the final game in today's episode, we take on Freiburg. Currently sat 13th in the Bundesliga. We're currently sat third. We're at home. I'd like to think that we should get the win in this simulated game. Bayer Leverkusen and Bayern Munich all won their 23rd game. So we still sit six points behind Bayer Leverkusen and 11 points, sadly, behind Bayer Munich. We can hope for our 24th game against Freiburg. We win and one of those two teams drop points. Because I don't want it where for the rest of the season, we win, they win, we win, they win. Because we will never be able to catch them. But this is the lineup we are putting out against Freiburg. Paco Alcacer is not fully fit, but I am going to start him ahead of Marlen. Simply because he's on fire at the moment in the Bundesliga. And I want to make sure that we do our utmost best to get the three points from Freiburg. So we're going with Paco Alcacer up top in the striker position. A little behind him, the captain Marco Reus in the central attack and midfield. Julian Brandt, Delaney, Vittel and Hazard through the midfield. Schultz, Hummels, Akanji and Klosterman at the back with Roman Berkey between the sticks. It's the simulated game. I would say PSG was my worry of today's episode. But now coming into this final game, <clears throat> it's simulated and I always worry that the EA gods are going to screw us because if we drop any more points, I honestly believe we drop more points, any more points towards the end of the Bundesliga season. And I just don't think we've got any chance of catching Bayern Munich. So we are now going to get the players warm up. We're going to hope that we get the win. 1-0. 1-0. Well. First things first. I noticed that FC Bayern. Of course beat Hoffenheim 3-0. So they've bagged 3 points. Can't actually see what happened with Bayer Leverkusen. They may not have played yet. But after just 3 minutes. Torgan Hazard. And I'm playing him so much ladies and gentlemen. Over Sancho. Because at the moment he's not happy. And he wants to leave. He's handed in a transfer request. And what I don't want is the next transfer window to open and the board just sell him on. I don't want that. I want to keep him at the club. 
Otherwise, we're going to have to look for a right midfield player to be back up to Sancho. We've already got one in Hazard, so that's why I don't want him to leave. He gets sent off after three minutes. He's really not a happy bunny at Dortmund right now. Matt Hummels picks up a yellow card in the 30th minute. The man that I started up top that I told you guys about, he is on fire. Paco Alcacer scores the one and only goal in today's game against Freiburg in the 42nd minute. Griffo then comes on for Fantz, which is for Freiburg in the 50th minute. And Hoffler then picks up a red card in the 56th minute. So two players sent off, one for ourselves, one for Freiburg. Disappointing result in terms of... Okay, we got the win, 1-0. I'm happy about that, but I thought we would have been able to do Freiburg 3 or 4-0. Regardless, I always say, a win is a win. And we'll certainly take those three points from Freiburg. And as we come to the end of today's episode, I've now advanced, as you can see, all the way to the first game in the next episode, which is going to be Borussia Mönchengladbach. Paco Alcacer picked up a February Player of the Month, which I am very happy about because he is having a tremendous couple of months in the last few months that we have played. He's currently... Third top goal scorer in the Bundesliga. He's one behind Thomas Muller. He's six behind Kevin Volland. Kevin Volland's absolutely smashing. And as we talk about Kevin Volland and the team that he plays for, which of course is Bayer Leverkusen, we can also touch up on the fact that, uh, well, Bayer Leverkusen dropped points. They must have drew their last game. We were six points behind. Now we're only four points behind. They drew and got a point. We won and got three, giving us the difference of two points, closing that gap. To now only four points behind second position by a Leverkusen, which is absolutely tremendous news because we're starting to catch them. And that's what I want to see. We don't have too long till the end of the Bundesliga season and we need to do whatever it takes to close that gap. Unfortunately, Bayern Munich still 11 points ahead of us, still not dropping any points, still not lost a single game in the Bundesliga this season. It's got to be only a matter of time before their luck changes. And unfortunately... At the end of today's episode, I am bringing a little bit of bad news. So we know that a player suspended was Torgan Hazard for picking up a red card. He's going to be banned for the next match. That's okay. <sighs> Hi, boss. An injury occurred in training. In training. What are we doing in training to injure our players? Unfortunately, Lucas Klosterman suffered a torn groin. The initial assessment from our medical department is that he'll be out for about two months ladies and gentlemen that means Lucas Klosterman is out for the rest of the season our solid right back that we have cherished since bringing him to Dortmund has played fabulous football for us is out for the rest of the season I think there's only about two months left this season we will take a look at that in just a moment's time we also have the youthly squad monthly report Born Engel has not turned 16 yet. His currently potential is 88 to 94. And we have Lewis Bauman, 85 to 94. We need them to turn 16. So we can start training them and play them in some games. Because one of the fan objectives is about getting a youngster from the youth academy. Training them, growing them by 8 and also playing them in some games. Coming to the end of the season, we may have to look at this in the next episode. Or maybe, I think this is episode maybe... 13, maybe 14, I think it's 13, maybe by episode 15 when we recap and look over the fan objectives, that's when we'll have to start making some big moves. I may also off camera look at the current scout list that we have to see if there's anyone else that is 16 and is looking very tasty. We could then potentially sign them up and start growing them. We can delete that email now. So unfortunately, yeah, Lucas Klosterman is out for the next two months and as we go over, oh, my bad, as we go over to the calendar, We've just gone into the month of March. He's out for all of March. He's out for all of April. They may see one or two games towards the back end of May. If he comes back early, that'd be great. We, we're going to have to hope that the medical team can do their best. But as we look at the games in the next episode, and the only... Oh, I thought it was only three games. Sorry, there is four games. But the next three games are Borussia Mönchengladbach away from home. We then have PSG... For the second leg in the round of 16 Champions League, which we currently have a 3-0 lead on aggregate with them. And then we play Schalke 04 back at home. Now I know, thanks to Chris, because first time round I was going to simulate the Schalke game. But I was brought, or should I say, it was brought to my attention that Dortmund and Schalke is the local derby like Liverpool versus Everton. So we certainly won't be simulating the Schalke game. I don't really, if I'm honest, want to simulate the Borussia Mönchengladbach game away from home in the Bundesliga. So, 
I'm going to have a little think about it between now and the next episode. But my thoughts right now, I play the Borussia Mönchengladbach game. Simulate the PSG game because we've already got a 3-0 lead. Three away goals that might be as well. And then play the Schalke game. What do you guys think? Do we simulate the game against PSG? The only problem with doing that is, this is where I then second thought myself. To win the Bundesliga right now is going to be very difficult. Whereas the Champions League was still in with a shot. In the Liverpool career mode, we won the Champions League. We were also very close to winning the Premier League. In this career mode at Dortmund, the Bundesliga isn't looking that easy. 11 points behind with not many games to go. To do a simulate the Borussia Mudge and Gladbach game. Hope that we get the win. If we don't, fine, we drop points. But then we can focus on winning the Champions League. Because PSG could still score three goals. Mbappe, Neymar, Di Maria, it, it's easily doable for PSG. So would I be a little bit stupid risking to simulate that game and hope to play the two Bundesliga games and keep our uh, Bundesliga title chances still in with hope? I'm not too sure. You guys will have to let me know down below what you think we should do. Do we give... I mean, I don't want to give up. I'm not someone that gives up. And I think there's still... Let me just go and count actually. I think there's still... There must be 12 Bundesliga games. So one, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Was there only ten games? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's only ten games. Oh yeah, which brings us to thirty-four. I thought there was thirty-six for a moment. Then there's thirty-four. So ten games to go. There's still thirty points up for grabs. So within probably the next episode or the episode after, if Bayern Munich still haven't lost a single game. I don't think it's going to be physical possible or physically possible for us to catch them. And that, that's unfortunately the way it is, ladies and gentlemen. EA have screwed up the game quite a bit. And there is times where teams go all season without losing and even drawing from what I've seen from some of you guys a single game all season. And unfortunately, we may have been drawn one of those career modes where Bayern Munich are going to be the team that never, ever lose a game in a full season, unfortunately. We're just going to have to suck it up and deal with that. But that is going to do it for today's episode, guys. And if you have enjoyed it, please do give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget, we're trying to hit 10 likes on every single video and 50 views within 24 hours. So if you have enjoyed it, please do give it a big thumbs up for me. Don't forget to drop your comments down below. If you're new around here, click that subscribe button. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. And I've been Massive Brad. Peace out.